This is the fabric that we chose for our curtains. Um, as you can see, it's got a quite a nice straight line, which makes life easier for uh, pattern matching things up. Um, it's reasonably, um, reasonably thick. Um, on a single layer, it allows some light through, but when doubled over on the pleats, it's really quite, quite thick, which makes for a nice, um, a nice blackout blind um, in the cabins. First task for us was to measure and cut out all the fabric. In our case, we had all of the fixtures um, for the the poppers for the curtain attachments. The rails were already in place. So it was pretty important for us to be able to match things up exactly. Um, in terms of measurements, we have done a calculation on ours which requires us to need double the length of fabric uh, because of the way that we're doing the pleats. So um, most of our widths were 85 or 86 centimetres for the saloon or the cabin. Um, and then there were two shorter cabin windows at only 58. Um, but each of those got doubled uh, and then we're allowing for a bit of hem at the side and then we're allowing for some hooks to be added on as well. But the, the basic measurement was the distance between the, the two outermost hook attachments and then doubled that. Step one, once the fabric is cut out to the right size, is just to sew a simple straight hem down both sides, uh, the short sides, and yeah, pin and sew together. Once you've done the side hems, you just repeat along the bottom all the way along one of the long edges, but leave the top one unhemmed for now. Then you need to find the midpoint along the uh, one of the edges, and then we chose six centimeters as the size of our pleats. Um, if you've got a bigger or a smaller window, you might want to do different sizes. So measuring three centimeters out from the center and then fold over so that it meets the center line. Um, we continuously checked ours um, and because they're being sewn at the bottom and the top, we, um, we measure both the top and the bottom, pinning the top and the bottom as you go. So fold one, uh, one fold over like so and pin. And then you repeat to make the opposite side of the next pleat. So measuring it out for 12 centimetres and then folding three centimetres under, which gives you, when it's doubled up, six centimetres in the centre and then six centimetres of doubled over fabric. Once you've completed all your pleats, um, do a quick double check before you sew them up that the end to end distance is what you're expecting it to be. Um, don't forget that you need a bit of extra at the ends to allow your hooks to attach, so we allowed a centimetre at either end. Once all the pleats have been pinned and pressed, we then sewed two parallel lines at the bottom of the curtains to keep the bottom of the pleats in place. Then you can fold over the top edge down and pin some curtain tape in place. Make sure you do a double check of the measurement from the top and the bottom once you've done your folding to make sure that um, it's the right height for your curtain. Um, you could have done the tape before the pleats but we decided that added extra bulk and was a bit of a waste of tape given how much doubling over there was so we've just we have put the tape over the top. Once the tape's all attached we made a couple of loops out of cord and lash them together and then hand sewed them into the corner to form the bottom bindings for the curtain and then that is them complete. Okay so this is the strip and we're going to put some um, poppers in it. Here are the poppers to hold it up. Now there's a style choice that will become obvious in, a mi in the middle in a moment whether you want the 
um, button end on the outside or the inside of the um, of the uh, strap. So anyway, I'm putting them on the inside. This rivet has got a post there and a punch here. So that goes on there and lines up with the post there. And then it gets hammered to make a hole. Okay, same thing at the other end. Hammered to make a hole. That's quite lined up properly. There we go. Okay, that cuts a hole in the fabric. And then the proper press stud gets pushed through the fabric to the other side. Then the other half goes on the back. That gets flipped over to the smooth side. And then you switch from the punch, which has got that end, to the spreading tool, which is that end. That goes on like that. So that's spread the inner bit, so it's now attached. So I'll just do the other one at the other end. So then, so it becomes more obvious. So these ones in the cabins have just got um, one stud there, which screws and this goes round the curtain and then attaches back onto itself and the question is you know of course what do you want to see do you want to see the fabric and a sort of join like that or do you want to see um, this pressed into the press stud so i've made the style choice of doing it on the on the back so this is the seams now on the inside before I show you the ones on the outside, here's this one, we'll release that, here's the curtain in situ, with its hook around one end, and its hook around the other end, that's what it looks like.